If your world was overrun with zombies that have metal cages around their hearts, what would you do? Your safe fortress has now been overrun with flesh-eating monsters, and now your only other safe house is on the verge of being destroyed. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the zombie castle in Cabaneri of the Iron Fortress Battle of Unato. These citizens have no idea that they're about to get turned into flesh-eating zombies. A mysterious virus has mutated countless of people all around the the world into Kabane zombies, and now the only humans left who have not been turned have now built fortress-like stations to protect themselves from these monsters. But they're losing ground to the Kabane zombies every day. Ikuma here is a half-human, half-Kabane hybrid who saved his friends after their hometown got overrun by zombies six months ago, or in our last video. Go check it out. Now with these people on the run, they live inside of this iron fortress train to go find a new home past these mountains. On the way there, they come across the city of Unato, but that's when they notice that their luck has just run out, and they realize that they've arrived right in the middle of a terrifying five-year war between these allied forces and the Kabane. This place is a battlefield, but if they don't clear this city, they'll never be able to make it to their new home alive. Okay, story time. This dude got bit by a Kabane, but managed to stop himself from turning into a zombie, and then somehow turn into a half-zombie, half-human matcha kit cat looking type of thing, and then he went through some crazy shit with these folks, not really important, but the important thing is, they're all best friends and on the run, and are looking for a new safe home to live but these zombies are absolutely terrifying. They're not like your regular zombies that are just flesh. They have metal cages around their hearts, which makes killing them all that more difficult. And they're quickly spreading across the country. And this means that taking back this city is absolutely essential if they want to reach their destination. But while they were on their way to getting there, these guys did everything wrong and messed up in two critical areas. If I were them, I would from the get-go have not entered Unoto Station right away. I would have used way more caution as this was a known zombie-infested area. Because while well, yes, this train station is an absolute beast, the Iron Fortress, but it's still vulnerable to being overwhelmed. And its maneuverability, it's a train. Like all trains, it relies on a simple train track, which means we've easily could have been blocked off or some of the track could have been destroyed by falling buildings. Or and this is our only safe ride. Letting people get off of it willy-nilly like they did here next to this lake was really stupid as hell. I would have first entered that area with a select team on foot and get a better sense of the surroundings before sending out our strongest team member who is also a half-human, half company half hybrid Mume. She's a real sweetheart, and I would send her up this mountainside and get to higher ground as soon as possible. This would have allowed us to get an overlook of the general area and be able to see over a greater distance. That is what I would have done before ever allowing anybody off of the train like they just did here. And this boss babe jumps off the train and saves the locals in this warehouse. As I said before, her name is Mume, and she, just like Ikuma, is another human cabinary hybrid. And she quickly kicks ass and takes name and is a little irritated that nobody bothered to put some guards at the rear. Good job, guys. The Iron Fortress parks near Nearby. And all the returning characters, Princess Aime, Kurusu, and all these other good people that I'm not gonna bother say their names about. But here they are. They all get out to help the allies and take back this city. Princess Aime tells everyone that the only way to get past this city is to go through it. But that means they must do whatever they can to make sure that the city of Unato doesn't fall to the Kabane zombies. And worse news arrives. They get word that more zombies are breaking through Unato's front line. Mume quickly tries to get there and takes out more hordes of zombies along the way. But suddenly some Kabane attack this guy. And one of them traps Mume right here where she stands. Oh my gosh, this has just got a whole lot worse. How this city is handling this war shows that these people are in for a rough time because this city is doing everything wrong. And Mume getting fudged isn't even the main problem here. That's just an anecdote. It's noted that while this city was trying to employ as many men onto the front lines as possible, what just happened in this warehouse was a classic example of resource mismanagement. Especially at a time when the Kabane are their most vicious and their most powerful, some soldiers should have been already been stationed at the Arsenal warehouse, as this is where all all the city's weapons are being made and repaired. And this fact, for obvious reasons, makes this warehouse one of the most important assets to this city. If Mume hadn't showed up, this place, along with many others, would have been destroyed, and this would have very quickly left this city without any defenses at all. If I was Unato's most sexy leader, I would have at the very least had a little bit more foresight to this situation and put some defenses at all times around the most critical areas of the city that are critical to sustaining this city's life. The city of Unato should have prioritized the most obvious factors like supply the population with food and providing them with a home and shelter. The safety of its citizens is another element that should have been addressed better. And from this, we could have figured out that while we're talking about safety, we need to be able to protect them with weapons, which means we need to keep the makers and facilities of those weapons also safe from harm. The leadership at Unato could have done a better job and would have prevented Mume from having to waste your time trying to save these facilities that clearly should have already been protected to begin with. About to lose her grip, Ikuma, the star of the show really, shows up and saves her just in the nick of time. 
time as heroes do, and these two work together to save this man from being eaten by this meatball zombie thing, and they blast it to hell. After saving the train ahead of them for now, Ikuma finds out that Mume isn't feeling that great, and neither is he. It's strange, but he thinks it's probably nothing. That was a mistake. He didn't realize that this is a sign for terrifying things to come. But then he gets harassed by some of the local town folk, who tell him that his zombie humankind isn't welcome here, and they tell him that he'll never be able to save this station, and that if he gets out of line, they'll kill him where he stands. But then he notices something odd right in front of him, and he sees thousands of zombie footsteps all headed in the same direction. The mountains. That doesn't make sense. Why would the zombies act this way? It's not usual behavior, and it only gets worse. He tells Mume that the Kabanes that they just fought seem to only want to kill people and not feed on them. This change in intent is key. Before they were doing it out of hunger, and now they're attacking out of rage. Shocked. He quickly writes down all of this down in his notebook, but suddenly has another massive headache and realizes that all the headaches have only gotten worse since they came to this city. Okay, this is big news. We gotta report this. We gotta tell somebody. The Kabane have been shown to retain some form of basic intelligence, like displaying basic ambushing tactics and hunting humans for food. However, Ikumir has stumbled across something and is wondering if these creatures are beginning to kill out of anger, and that is a very bold statement to make, as this would completely change everything we know about them. And while we don't know exactly how their brain operates, we can get a sense of how they operate by observing their movements and mannerisms, and by comparing them to something that we do know much more about, and that would be animals. Because these zombies, in a way, are like animals. They behave more similarly to animals than they do actual humans, because the fact is, is that the Kabane as a species are less efficient than us, and that prevents them from being deep thinkers. And this means that like many animals, the Kabane don't have the capacity to display more complex emotions like killing someone out of anger, and are likely still killing people out of their natural innate desire to feed. Ikuma is onto something, then we have to look into it. It could be that Ikuma is both right and wrong. Right that the Kabane are doing something differently, but wrong in that they're starting to develop complex emotions. It's even more likely that they're being led by someone or something. Later, Mume passes the day away and hangs out with one of her friends, and she tries to make a gift for Ikuma. Ooh. Her friend wonders if she has a crush on our main man, but Mume tells her to shut her mouth because no way does she have a crush on Ikuma, that stud. But she has no idea that her love will ultimately cost her everything. The next day, Ikuma finds a shortcut to the castle. He heads to the military headquarters to tell everyone about his shocking discovery. But that's when he bumps into Mume. Excited, she tries to give him her gift and declare her love, but he tells her that they don't have time for no cute anime bullshit right now. He then runs off to meet with his crew and the military, while Mume stews in her rejected love and walks off. Walking into this tent, everyone here is discovering how to take down the Kabane castle. This castle used to belong to the city, but now it's been taken over by the Kabane zombies, and they formed a zombie nest, and is the reason why they haven't been able to defeat these hordes of zombies. But this general mustache man tells everyone that he now has a secret weapon now that they've taken back a little bit more of their city. They are now within range to use the military's high-tech mortar on the castle, and plan to blow it all up. And in doing this, will also free up a new train path, and will allow everyone, even Ikuma's crew, to pass through. The general tells everyone that the special mortar will arrive in four days from now, but in the meantime, the army will advance closer to the castle, and bomb part of its structure to weaken its defenses. And he tells the town folks to get to work on repairing the damaged train tracks leading up there. Whoa, 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 okay, 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 whoa, whoa, hold up! They think they have all the cards, and have figured out the enemy, and know from where they will likely strike from. But as we can tell from past examples, this zombie's disease has the ability to keep surprising us and how it mutates. If I was them, I would for starters not assume that we know everything about these creatures. And honestly, they should listen to me. We've been on the Iron Fortress. We've encountered Kabane creatures in the past, like a fused colony, which is a nightmare to deal with. It is basically a giant monster made of millions of interconnected Kabane fused together in one mind. And also these Wazatori Kabane, which are Kabane that basically retained all of their previous physical memory from the past. Basically warrior memories, which makes Wazatori Kabane even more lethal. The point is, this virus is showing us that it has the potential to mutate in crazy ways, which means we don't understand fully our enemy. And the other thing I gotta bring up is the footprints that we saw earlier, and how these footprints could indicate that the zombies could attack from a route that we aren't prepared for. But I'm not gonna bring it up to them right away. Nah, screw that idea. Here's the thing. If I'm Ikuma, I'm a happy Kabane hybrid, and most of the military in this room doesn't trust me to begin with. And based on my appearance, it means that everyone here has already has a preconceived notion of what I am, who I am, and my trustworthiness. The military has had bad experiences with Kabane zombies, and since we are half zombie, this means that their personal resentment towards Kabane 
way has started to affect their logic and they're not going to believe whatever I tell them because I'm not fully a human. I'm not one of them, which unfortunately is not entirely their fault. It's just the way our brains are made up. At this point, lives are at stake in this city, which means that the emotions from everyone here will be as high as hell. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have Princess Ayame tell them. She will reveal my findings and we'll have her convince the military of what she saw because I'm not going to take any credit. Doing this will increase the perceived value of our information based on the fact that Princess Ayame is viewed higher up on the totem pole than I am. And this would allow us to change the military's plans of attack and hopefully get them onto our side through Princess Ayame. Because while in theory we could do our own thing, working together at a time like this is going to 100% more likely lead to a better outcome. These two local builders tell the general that this plan is risky as hell, but this Gimli military guy tells them that they don't have time to come up with a better plan. Once the snow starts melting, the Kabane will be able to move in much faster, and everyone here will be even more screwed. They'll quickly get overrun. Ikuma then finally steps in and tells everyone his shocking discovery. Based on the direction of the Kabane footsteps and how they weren't spread out all over the place, but they all went in one direction, he thinks there is a chance they might attack from somewhere else other than the front line. Like, for example, from the rear. Everyone thinks he's crazy, but he begs them to listen to him. He thinks the Kabane are being led or somehow mind controlled and will attack from a path that they don't even know about. He demands that Mustache Man station some soldiers in the rear and demands that he be allowed to investigate his findings even further before the military starts their plan. But none of the army trusts him and they think he's basically a good for nothing zombie. Ikuma gets pissed off at Mustache Man and the military, but that's when he suddenly collapses in pain. His headache has come back and he sees vision of the castle. Ikuma thinks this is a sign. Everyone tells him to rest up, but he says he doesn't have time. Princess Ayame quickly apologizes on behalf of Ikuma and tells the military that her people will calm him down. Mume shows up again like a fly that won't go away, and she sees Ikuma packing, determined to handle this himself. He tells her that he will go investigate the Kabane footprints before it's too late. She tells him it's too dangerous and wants to tag along, but he misunderstands her and thinks that she doesn't trust him either. Mume just doesn't want him to die, but that's when Ikuma suddenly goes full-on zombie and he attacks Mume and tries to kill her. And during the chaos, the two of them go out onto the street and the whole village sees him going crazy, including these guards. Knocking her out, Ikuma prepares to rip the flesh right off of her sweet neck. <sighs> This just went from bad to worse. This was entirely the fault of our two beloved heroes, Mume. But even Princess Ayame, it's also her fault. Not only did the princess not stand behind Ikuma in the slightest, she paid her respects to the older generals here way too much. The military not trusting Ikuma and his instincts, which they should have listened to him, by the way, caused him to lose his shit, and now he's about to kill Mume. Princess Ayame, at the very least, should have ordered Kurusu to follow him and make sure that he doesn't do anything stupid. But also, I gotta bring something up about Mume. I mean, I get it, she's in love with our hero Ikuma, all you gotta do is tell him, you know what, I believe you, I will go with you and make sure you don't kill yourself. That simple. Plus he would have earned some major brownie points with Ikuma. And doing that would have prevented Ikuma from freaking out, he would have not zombified on her probably, and they would have left to try and figure out what is going on. If she's feeling headaches too, along with Ikuma, she should have told Princess Ayame that, hey yo, I'm feeling some headaches and I felt fine before we ever came to the city, but now I feel some major migraine problems. Then you know what would have happened? Princess Ayame would have seen Ikuma collapse on the ground and go, hmm, that's weird. Two of my half Kabane zombie hybrid warriors both have migraines. This is a little too weird to be a coincidence. Because think about it, right now they're in a new city. They don't know anybody. They don't have any friends. All they have are the people that are on the Iron Fortress. Everyone on there is on the same team. They're currently inside a base where nobody trusts any of them. And any slip up they have means it affects all of them. Just like Igma did just now, freaking out in front of the leadership of Unato City is probably going to cause them problems. He should not have done that. What the both of them should have done would have been to go to Princess Aime and say, yo, we have headaches, but also we need to check out what's going on with these foot tracks. And Princess Aime should have said, hey, you know what? I'll cover you to see what's going on. That's what should have happened. In short, the lesson to all of this, my good weebs, is that while everyone on the Iron Fortress is a total badass, they really suck at the communication department. Ikuma readies his nasty zombie mouth and it aims right at Mume's sweet throat. But suddenly he freezes in fear. He sees the tears streaming down her face, which causes him to snap back to his humanity. And he is completely shocked at what almost just happened. Disappointed, Mume tells Ikuma that he might as well kill her because she doesn't want to live in a world where he's dead. And now he feels really bad and he tries to comfort her, but suddenly these soldiers rush in to capture him. Just as his gang here shows up, gee, you showed up in the nick of time. Everyone here thinks he's turned into a Kabane zombie, but Ikuma quickly shouts all of them down and tells them to put him in three days solitary confinement. If he doesn't turn into a zombie by then, then that means he's still human. Out of nowhere, Mustache Man shows up and tells his men to do what Ikuma says. Take
taking him away, Ikuma yells out to Mume and tells her he'll come back to make her happy when this is all over, but she ignores him and walks away. The next day, Kurusu and Princess Aime practice beating the shit out of each other and they talk about Ikuma. Kurusu says that Ikuma has never been wrong before about the Kabane and that he might be onto something and she thinks he might be right. They then decide to look into Ikuma's findings and discover something huge. An old mining tunnel leading from the terrifying castle into the city. This is how the Kabane have been sneaking into the main town. They quickly beg the locals to help them infiltrate the tunnel before the army and their special weapon arrives. And you know what happens? This guy agrees to help them and offers to lead them inside. And even Mume agrees to join in on the hunt. But that's when they suddenly find a hidden door covered in this membrane lock. And they realize that the Kabane have purposely hidden this entrance from being discovered. It's suspicious as hell. And everyone here thinks there's no way that these flesh-eating creatures could have done this by themselves. But that's when they hear the roar of an arriving train in the distance. It's the army's mortar train. And it's arrived ahead of schedule, which means everyone here screwed. The army gets ready for the battle of the century, ahead of schedule. Princess Aime quickly goes to meet with Mustache Man and demands to know what's going on. He tells her that since the train has arrived early, they might as well attack Unoto Castle now within the next hour. And he orders her to prepare her iron fortress to assist them in the rear of the battle. This is not going to turn out well. This battle is about to be a bloodbath because I'm spotting way too many signs that tell me that the military over here has no clue what they're doing. If I was Princess Aime here, I would first try to prove to them that rushing in with their only ace in the hole this mortar is super risky. The train just got here, and Gimli guy mentioned that they wanted to rush this battle before the snow around them melts, but let's be honest, waiting a day to assess the situation before sending in the mortar won't destroy the military's plan, but rushing in to attack right now might just do that. Another thing we must notice is that they sent in one mortar train, and that's a problem, because the entire military's plan relies on this one freaking train to save all their problems. Now all this mortar looks totally badass as hell, but you know what, maybe we should have explored the possibility of maybe getting more of these mortar trains because they look super useful, and at the very least they could have done would have been to call for an escort of some kind. It's also noted that they wanted workers to fix the tracks leading up to the mountains, so the mortar train could get closer to the castle. But in reality, they should have worked on this while placing war trains behind the workers to guard them while they worked on fixing most, if not all, of the train tracks leading up to the castle. I would also like to reinforce my decision to comment on how stupid Mustache Man's plans were by telling him what we just saw in the old mining tunnel, because this entrance is how the Kabade have been sneaking into the city, causing havoc, and then retreating. And this further proves Ikuma's case that someone has been leading these creatures and would likely put the military onto high alert. Because honestly, at this point, Princess Ayame is behaving like the biggest pushover in the world and is exhaustingly annoying. Back at the mining tunnel, army soldiers finally arrive and ask Mume what the hell is she doing here? But that's when they suddenly hear a loud bang and sinister moans coming from behind the mining door. Knowing what horrors lay behind that door, Mume quickly tells everyone to get back, but it's too late. The hordes of Kabane zombies finally burst through and quickly overrun some of the men. Mume takes pot shots from up on this hill and uses this moment to sneak past the swarm of Kabane, sneaking into the tunnel with one mission in mind, to take out whoever is controlling these zombie bastards while swarms of them begin to surprise attack the city. Nearby, the locals try to fix the train tracks when some of the workers begin to get nervous. They think they hear Kabane sounds coming from nearby, but this soldier tells them to get back to work. Now within firing range, the army's train prepares to fire their special mortar cannon. Firing the first shot, they realize that this castle is stronger than they thought, but they did damage it, and they prepare to fire a second round. Meanwhile, back in town, the soldiers walking Ikuma begin to hear that the town is getting overrun by Kabane zombies, and that Mume has snuck into a mining tunnel alone. Ikuma is shocked and demands to be let free, telling them that he can help, but these soldiers begin to panic and think that he's starting to zombify again, and they think that him and Mume are working together with the Kabane. They shoot at him, causing Ikuma to get really pissed off, and he breaks free of his chains and walks right on up to this soldier, reaches his hand out, and grabs the gun instead of the man, stunning the soldier and probably making him feel like a total idiot and super guilty. And so Ikuma takes the weapon and heads out to save his girl and the town. Meanwhile, Mume presses on inside of the mining tunnel, and that's when she come across this terrifying horde of Kabane zombies. She fights them off and barely passes through and barely misses a booby trap. And out of nowhere, she falls through the floor and begins to realize that she might not be able to save the town without her man. Ah, classic anime, you never fail. She hears some footsteps coming towards her and sees that it's a vicious Kabane but this one looks more terrifying and different than the rest. Back at the tunnel, the military prepares to fire a second round, but that's when this mysterious Kabaneri fires two sniper rounds from the castle, hitting the mortar cannon, but nothing happens. But that's when they hear the rumbling armies of Kabane crash through the bushes nearby and quickly swarm the cannon and the train. Using their collective heat, they melt the cannons, and the allies quickly try to fire off a final round, but it's too late, and everything explodes. Mustache Man tries to drive the train out of there, but gets overwhelmed and eaten alive while the train falls off the mountainside. It's glorious. Back underground, Mume tries to fire at the Kabane, but 
she's no match for it. She tries to escape, but isn't quick enough. Desperate, she reaches for her gun in the distance, but gets kicked into a wall. Knowing she's about to die, she hides behind this rock and thinks she's safe. But that's when the carbonate begins to push, and she quickly realizes that she's about to get crushed alive. Oh, as much as I love Mume's character, she really did everything wrong. I don't mean from when she entered the tunnel, but from the moment she fell for our main man. Mume rushed through inside of the tunnel the moment she could and rushed in like Rambo without a care in the world. And yes, it's obvious she is very capable, but her rushing proves that she wasn't thinking clearly, and she didn't stop to think that she might just run into something more dangerous the closer she got to the zombie hive castle. Which is why she should have had someone else to travel with her from the main team, because honestly, there was no need to rush. The city's already getting burned to hell, so they might as well take their time. By running into this next level Spider-Man 2099 type of carbonate, it shows the closer we get to this carbonate castle, the tougher and tougher these monsters will become. And now that she's by herself in unfamiliar terrain, she's really not setting herself up for success. Mume is certainly not acting like any really cool boss babe that I've ever seen. But if I was a 5 foot 2 little girl and I would have known that there would have been one card left that we could have played. It's noted that our fall down here just lasted about 3 and a half seconds, which means that we fell approximately 51 meters down. Now it's clear that from the looks of things, we aren't as strong right now, so we probably couldn't jump back up from where we fell. But the time that we hit that second pipe to when we landed on the floor was only about 1.8 seconds, and this fact is good news for us. Because this means that at that distance, that second pipe we hit would have only been around 5.7 meters above our heads. And this means that from the get-go, after seeing how terrifying this monster is, I would have tried to reach those pipes that would have been within reaching distance, and we could have used that to scale the wall back up from where we came from. Mume yells out for Ikuma in her last moment, thinking he won't show up. And you know what happens? He does! He shows up at last minute and swiftly kills the Kabane. And Mume runs to him and they hug it out, and he tells her that they'll never separate again, but weirdly enough, Ikuma's back begins to glow bright green. Moving on. Meanwhile, up in the mountain, the locals continue to try and fix the tracks, but gets word that the military train nearby has been destroyed, and they get ready to retreat, but they hear the swarm of Kabane footsteps charging towards them, and they all get ready to die right here. But Kuzuru and his team show up and help them hold them off, and Princess Aime finds out that Ikuma has escaped and is headed inside of the Kabane castle to go after the leader, apparently. This mysterious sniper dude. She tells everyone that they need to go help him and stop the man controlling all of the Kabane, but Gimli guy over here tells everyone that their plan has failed, so they should retreat. And Princess Aime finally develops some cojones. She steps up her game, walks over to this man, and tells him to grow a freaking pear. And you know what it works? She convinces him to stay, and the rest of the survivors continue to fight on. Back in the cave, Ikuma and Mume try to figure out what the frick happened with his back, and they also realize that their painful headaches have also disappeared. And just then, they get found by one of the teammates, and he hands Ikuma his signature Kabane slaying weapon. Reunited with his squad, they attack Unato Castle from different directions. The rest of the town folks also join in, and everybody works together, it's a real sweet moment, and they use this missile from the Iron Fortress to blow a hole through the castle's front door, and they head on inside. Heading into this room, they notice a blinding blue light shining above them, and they see a freaking kid inside, what? And that's when one of the locals gets shot, and Ikuma notices the sniper from above. They quickly hide, and the local guy recognizes him. He tells the group that this guy was known as the Lord of Unato Station, and that he was supposed to be dead, and he tells them a little guilty secret. Five years ago, during the fall of Unato Station, the Lord got bit by a Kabane, but somehow he didn't die. He turned into a Kabaneri instead, but the people didn't know what a Kabaneri was. They tried to kill him, and in doing so, almost killed his daughter, causing him to lose it, and forced him to turn his daughter also into a Kabaneri. And now this guy's trying to take over Unato Station out of revenge, and won't stop until he kills all of the humans here. They realize that his daughter is the one inside of the blue cocoon of light, and Ikuma begins to recognize this light. It's the same color as the time when Mume was in the heart of a fused colony some time back, and they realize that this castle is actually a nest to a fused colony. And once this thing bursts, it will turn into a terrifying Kabade monster, and won't stop until it destroys the world. The gang gets ready and prepared to destroy the shit out of this thing, but suddenly they hear a loud roar erupt from the castle. The egg is beginning to crack. This local guy desperately tries to talk some sense into Lord Unato, but he almost gets shot again. And Mume uses this opportunity to fire her gun, and she disarms the bad guy. Quickly climbing up the castle, she battles it out with the Kabaneri Lord Unato, and shows off some really slick moves, and he tries to shoot her again, but she deflects the bullet, and it hits his daughter. Suddenly, a flood of memories from the cocoon flood into Mume. Distracted, Lord Unato is about to kill her, but she gets saved by the local dude. Knowing this lord from years ago, he begs him to be a good guy, but this baddie is like, nope, and stabs him through the chest. Ikuma then loses his shit and tag teams him with Mume. Battling it out, Mume realizes that this bad guy can't be saved, and critically wounds him, making him fall down below. And that's when Sniper Lord's daughter sees her daddy fall, and she also loses her shit. The cocoon then bursts open fully, and
and the whole mountain begins to rumble. Shit goes south real quick, and Mume can tell that this monster is actually crying, and it's afraid. And deep down, she's just a scared little girl who watched her dad, who was trying to protect her, fall to his death. Just kidding, but Sniper Lord is about to fall to his death for good, but he gets saved by a local guy. And everyone here quickly gets out of the crumbling castle, and they witness the entire mountain turn into what they all feared, a fused Kabane colony. Okay, this is some crazy anime BS right now. The very thing we all feared has happened, a fused Kabane colony. We all seen one before in our previous video, and it was super scary and messed up. It's basically millions of Kabane all coming together to form a big giant monster. Think along the lines of an ant colony, and all the worker ants fused together to form a freaking giant super ant. Scary. Nearby, Princess Ayame and the Iron Fortress get news that the train tracks have now been blocked by this scary monster. She quickly gathers everyone and tells them to retreat, but it's too late. The fused colony spots them and begins to charge right at them and begins pulling on the train from behind. It tries to destroy everyone here, but this super smooth train operator girl quickly comes up with a plan and tells everybody that they'll shake it off once they get through this tunnel, but there's a problem. They're going too fast and they will need to slow down before they come out of the other side of the tunnel or else the train will derail. Train girl and her friend quickly come up with a solution and ready the emergency brakes, and she tells the squad to shoot the monster now! Manning the cannons, they blast this thing off just before they go through the tunnel, causing the monster to crash into this wall as it explodes. The train pulls on its emergency brakes while everyone inside holds on to dear life, and they make it safely to the other side and survive. The entire town then notices the sky rain down blue snow particles falling from above, and they think that the spirit of the Kabane girl is now resting and is at peace. The local guy nearby holds Sniper Lord in his arms as he watches his former friend calmly drift off into to the fiery pits of hell. Later, the gang celebrates. Bodyguard Kuzuru tells Lady Ayame not to risk her life in battle next time because she could get hurt. And then she sort of makes him kind of nervous with her cuteness, and it is super cute. Outside of the train, Ikuma and Mume talk about how the Kabane virus increases anger, anxiety, and hatred. But what suppresses the virus from taking over the world is love. He tells her that one day they'll find a cure, but until then, she shouldn't worry about him turning evil anytime soon. He then shows off the gift that she made for him earlier because he finally took the time to listen to her and take the gift. And and she gets super excited and even makes an excuse to walk near him. Cheeks blushing. She suddenly plants a big kiss right on his mouth. This freaks him out, but it makes her super excited. And everything and everyone is all hunky-dory and happy. And they continue on with their journey to find their new home. But what do you guys think about it? Let us know what you like about the video and what you didn't like about the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, please. And as always, don't forget to check out our How To Be playlist.